Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and welcome to this corner of chaos. If you're new to this channel, sorry, and I guess you're welcome for this whole shit show. If you're not new, you know that I've been in Europe for about the past three months, and I recently came back a little bit early because of family stuff, and life has been a little bit chaotic. Which means I'm now just getting around to unboxing all of the books that I acquired while I was away, so I figured you might want to be along on that ride. They're still all in their packages. I'm gonna hold them up in two sets because I don't hate myself and also I recently went back to the gym and all of my muscles hate me right now. Stack the first. Ugh. Stack the second. The vast majority of these I purchased myself but I'm pretty sure there's a couple of arcs interspersed into here so I'm excited to get to those. And I'm excited to get to everything else because I've pretty much forgotten what I bought while I was away. There were certain things that I was like, ooh, that is gonna come out or I pre-ordered this or that or the other thing or I was just trying to get points on my cards when I was ordering things because that's how they get ya. Or I had the Book of the Month books uh, which I've been trying to dial back on but there were things I actually wanted to read in each of the months. At least that's what I told myself when I said, yes, get this for the book of the month, so... We'll find out what's in all of these boxes, because I think I know maybe one thing that's in here, and that's only if it's come out already. I pre-ordered it, and I'm not sure if it's been released yet. I'm getting older, and my brain is going, so enjoy. Also, I figured I should probably show you the books that I bought while I was in Europe. I only managed to buy three, because I didn't want to be carting around books all throughout Europe for three months, but I will show you what I got. The first one I bought mostly as a keepsake for the place I was buying it from, and that's this cute little copy of The Little Prince. I bought this at Shakespeare and Company, and they put their little stamp at the beginning of the book. Oh, my muscles are so messed up from the gym. Okay. They put their little stamp at in the front there, which in itself kind of makes it a keepsake. And they also give you a bookmark, which I appreciate. I read this as a teenager after watching the movie, thought it was fine back then, reread it while I was in France, thought it was fine, it's like kind of a three-star book because a lot of it doesn't make sense. And then, I don't know, maybe a few weeks after rereading it, I actually saw Jesse over on Jesse on YouTube talking about it, and how when this book was published, it was super, super racist, and later publications have taken those elements of racism out. So now I'm like, well damn, I got it as a souvenir, so I'm not gonna get rid of it, but I'm also not super stoked about the history of this book. So, just wanted to be upfront about that. In addition to that, while I was on the Channel Islands and I was on Jersey, we wandered into a Waterstones, and there were a couple of books that I just had to simply bring back with me. The first one being Heartbreak Boys. This one is by Simon James Green, and I've never been able to buy any of his books before because they don't seem to be available in North America, or at least they haven't been the many times I've been like, oh yeah, I want to try something by that author, and then I literally can't. This one was a cute summertime road trip type of story between these two boys who have both recently broken up with their significant others. They used to be friends when they were kids and then they kind of grew apart for reasons, and now they're basically just trying to make their exes jealous because they're having the best summer ever on Instagram. In that same shop, Chad pointed out this one book to me and I went, yeah, that looks like a book that needs to come with me, and that's this one, Welcome to the Hainam Dong Bookshop. This is a very bookish book. It's translated from Korean. It's got beautiful end papers, and one of the details I I didn't notice until I was at least halfway through was that at the end of all of the chapters, I well I noticed this part first, but there's this little figure right here who is also on the front of the book, and I noticed that they were at the end of every chapter, but what I didn't notice until about halfway through is they were actually working their way across the page, which was a really cute detail. This is really, really cute. It's all about this woman who opens her own bookstore, the reasons behind that, and then you're also following all these different people that work in and around the bookstore or have something to do with the bookstore. I found it very enjoyable, very cozy, very good time. All right, let's get into the books that arrived at my home while I was away. I have my trusty scissors with me. Let's just see how long this takes and how much of a mess I make. Starting at the top, we've got something from... Pegasus books, so this must have been something that they went, hey, do you want this? And I went, yes, yes, I do. So let's see what that was, because honestly, I do not remember anything. This one is Never Ever Just Disappears, Seven Hidden Queer Histories. 
I'm very excited about this. Obviously we know why I said yes to this one. It's a queer book. It's a queer history book. Just give me yes, yes. This one was published in February, so I would have told the person who contacted me that I will not be able to get to it immediately because I'm not home, but they sent me a copy anyway, and that's very nice of them. Evoking the creative works of James Baldwin, Josephine Baker, and E.M. Forrester, among others, a radical new history of seven queer lives and places that shaped those groundbreaking artists. Okay, yes please. Biography, so nonfiction. Excellent. I am um, pretty sure that's gonna have to make its way onto my Queer Lit Readathon TBR for next month. Speaking of, we are putting together d the details for that. Uh, it's just gonna take a little bit of time because obviously things have been a little bit busy. Next, something from Penguin. And it's in one of those packages that I'm always afraid I'm gonna mess up because they're like weirdly insulated. I think I've cut into them before and that was a mistake. Oh, this one came with a little postcard from the author too. Okay, this one is, I'm so glad we had this time together, a memoir. And I believe, yep, graphic memoir. <sighs> I love a graphic memoir. Welcome to the world of Maurice Velocoup, the youngest of four children raised by Dutch immigrants in the 1970s suburb of Toronto. Okay, yeah, that would have been why I picked this. Despite the working class family's deep reverence for the arts, young Maurice would rather watch Carol Burnett on TV than read a book. He also loves playing with Barbie dolls and helping his mom in her basement hair salon. In short, he is really, really gay. Okay, yeah, that again would have been why I said yes to this and I would have told them that uh, I can't read it immediately, but guess what? Gonna read it for the Queer Lit Readathon. <laughs> I need to find a different place to put all of my books because every time I put something right in front of me, it affects uh, the tripod and um, that's awkward. And yet I don't want to keep bending over because uh, again, I went to the gym and everything hurts. Also, I meant to explain earlier and didn't, not that I really actually need to explain my appearance to you, but I'm going to. I currently have a heat rash, which is affecting this kind of area of my body, and I just had an oatmeal bath, and I'm trying very desperately not to touch any of my skin because I just want to peel it right off my body, which is why I'm wearing this uh, older tank top that is a bookish tank top, not that you can really read it anymore. It used to say, if my book is open, your mouth is closed. Thanks, Mom. Really good gift giver. <laughs> All right, let's get into the three months of Book of the Month that I didn't get around to opening until just now. I think I've put these in order of uh, February, March, April, just based on the tracking number that's on the front of them. Whatever, I'm just gonna open them. <sighs> All right, I cut all three of those open for expediency and uh, put them back in the right order, I think. Let's find out. All right, on top and supposedly the books that I would have gotten for February, if I've done the math right. No, oh, March, whatever, I don't care. So apparently in March I got Listen for the Lie, which I have to imagine has something to do with audiobook narration or podcast, probably, it's probably a podcast. What if you thought you murdered your best friend? And if everyone else thought so too? And what if the truth doesn't matter? Lucy and Savvy were the golden girls of their small Texas town. Pretty smart and enviable, Lucy married a dream guy with a big ring and an even bigger home. Savvy was a social butterfly loved by all, and if you believe the rumors, especially popular with the men in town. But after Lucy is found wandering the streets covered with her best friend Savvy's blood, everyone thinks she's a murderer. Fair. It's been years since that horrible night, the night Lucy couldn't remember anything about, but she has since moved to LA and started a new life. And now phenomenally huge hit true crime podcast, Listen for the Lie. Okay, yeah, that's what I figured. I, th I had like a, a small amount of my brain kind of remembered a little bit about what my, I might have ordered based on my personal reading taste. So it's got a podcast element, it's got a true crime element, but in itself is a mystery. Cool. That month I also got a Book of the Year book, which was uh, Truly Yours by Abby Jimenez. I've never read anything by this author before. Other ones I could select from because I think this is a situation where you're allowed to select a book. This is the one I picked up. A novel of terrible first impressions, hilarious second chances, and finding joy in finding your perfect match from the best-selling author of Part of Your World. If I'm remembering correctly, Kristen from Kristen Craves Books really liked Part of Your World, but didn't really like this one, but I've never read either, so we'll find out when I get around to this. Next, and I assume February, let's find out. Ooh, you're heavy. Yes, February. So my tracking thing didn't work, but you know, I'm just making an effort. It's fine. 
Again, we always come with bookmarks if they're getting stacked in front of you. This one is The Mayor of Maxwell Street. The year is 1921 and America is burning. A fire of vice and virtues rages on every shore and Chicago is its bleeding heart. I think I saw this and I went, oh, historical fiction from Chicago during Prohibition? Yes. And finally, my book of the month books that I would have gotten for April, which was my birth month, so I know there's two books in here because during your birth month you get to pick another book, which I did. The book on top is Dragon Fruit, which is a stunning cover, and I love this little bat, by the way. If there's not a bat in this book, I'm gonna be a little bit upset. In the old tales, it is written that the egg of a sea dragon, Dragon Fruit, holds within it the power to undo a person's greatest sorrow. But as with all things that offer hope when hope has gone, the tale comes with a warning. Every wish demands a price. That's honestly all I need to know. The other book I picked up is Darling Girls. I have to assume this is mystery thriller just by looking at this ominous swimming pool on the front, but let's find out. There are more than secrets buried in what? Hmm. I'm gonna sneeze. Hey! <coughs> okay. There are more than secrets buried at Wild Meadows. For as long as they can remember, Jessica, Nora, and Alice have been told how lucky they are. As young girls, they were rescued from family tragedies and raised by a loving foster mother, Miss Fairchild, on an idyllic farming estate and given an elusive second chance at a happy family life. But their childhood wasn't the fairy tale everyone thinks it was. Yeah, okay. I'm already drawn in. If you want to know more, you can look up the synopsis. Okay, we've made it through the first stack. Let's continue on to the second stack. This would be something I would have purchased myself because it's from Thrift Books, which is an online retailer where you can buy used books. I don't remember what I bought myself, but I do remember making a purchase. Ah, yes, because I've always, I've wanted to read this for ages. Why do you put stickers on it like this? Why, why, why? Your book people, you should know that nobody likes these stickers. I'm gonna deal with this later. Tarnished Other Stars is what I bought. I bought this because I met the author years ago, have been meaning to read it since then, since actually before then, and I'm pretty sure there's asexual rep in this. And this was something that wasn't available through my library, and I wanted to read it for one of the prompts for Read Queer all year while I was gone, and I was kind of upset that I couldn't get it through the library and figured I should just buy my own copy. I really wish that sticker wasn't on it though. so rude. Okay, I got most of it. Oh, I might do it, guys. My camera managed to turn off just as I was finishing ripping that sticker off, but I got it all, so very excited about that. And um, another thing I'm putting on my Queerly Readathon stack. All right. We have something from the University of Toronto, which means it's probably an ARC, it's probably something I didn't even ask for, because sometimes they just send me things, but let's find out. This one is the essence of invention. This is vaguely tickling something in, my, in the back of my brain, so I might have actually said, yes, I'll take this. Medicine and the joy of creativity. So it's about those intersections, which seems like a weird place to be. So I'm into it. The essence of invention tells the story of medical inventors who have laid the foundation for modern patient care from the development of anesthesia and safe surgery to the advent of vaccines against smallpox, polio, and COVID-19, and how, through creativity and perseverance, they have changed the world. Seemed kind of interesting, so I will give it a go at some point, she says in this room, surrounded by books some of which she definitely hasn't read yet. These last three packages are all from Indigo, so they're all things I bought myself. This is the one that I knew that I'd bought myself, and I'm just double-checking the publisher on this because I'm pretty sure it's not St. Martin's Press. Okay, it's not. Cool. I just know that I'm pretty sure this author has published things with that, with that publishing house before, so I, even though I'm very excited about this book, wouldn't have shown it if that were the case. This was published by Scholastic, and it's Page Not Found by Jen Wilde. This is Jen Wilde's first middle grade book, and I am very excited about it because I absolutely adore Jen Wilde. Jen Wilde, fun fact, actually drew the avatar for my channel. Nothing about us without us. When Paige learns that her parents enrolled her in an autism study without telling her, her whole world turns upside down. Suddenly she isn't sure if she can trust two people she loves the most. A chip was implanted in her brain that sends information about her mood, brain activity, and location. It can even boost the chemicals that keep her calm 
or make her feel happy. So Paige has to wonder, can she even trust her own mind? I am so very excited to get into this. Very also excited to see what it looks like. Ooh, 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 ooh. it's textured on the front. I love that. Okay, keep it together, Kathy. You got a couple more. There's not even a pull tab on this one. Let's see if I can get in without giving myself a paper cut with cardboard, which I've done before. Would not recommend. Ooh, sticking to the package. Cool. My favorite. Ah, yes. This one is The Outside Circle, a graphic novel. Part of my brain keeps telling me you've read this before, and the other part's like, no, you've just wanted to read this for a while, so I eventually picked it up. And if I have read it before, now I have a hard copy, and that's fine. Pete, a young Aboriginal man, was wrapped up in gang violence, lives with his younger brother Joey and his mother, who is a heroin addict. One night, Pete and his mother's boyfriend Dennis get into a big fight, which sends Dennis to the morgue and Pete to jail. Initially, Pete keeps his ties to his crew until a jail brawl forces him to realize the negative influence he has become on Joey, which encourages him to begin the process of rehabilitation that includes traditional Aboriginal healing circles and ceremonies. Sounds good. I'm into it. And here's what the art style looks like. And finally, a new, an, a third different type of package, all from the same retailer, but ordered at separate times, I'm pretty sure. Well, some of them were ordered at separate times. Ah, uh, good. I was hoping this would be this. Backpacking on Vancouver Island, which is where I live. I've been going on a lot of adventures in Europe recently, and now I'm excited to have more adventures where I actually live, because I definitely cannot afford to go anywhere else anytime soon. <laughs> the subtitle on this is The Essential Guide to Best Multi-Day Trips and Day Hikes. There's a lot of hiking on my island. My island is an absolutely beautiful place to be, and I've wanted to explore more of it, but I didn't really know where to start, so... Of course it's me, I'm gonna get a book on the subject. I'll just pick these up like this for a thumbnail image where I don't look unhinged at all. This is the reason we go to the gym, so we can pick up books and thumbnail photos. So there you have it. There are some books that I've re- oh, Don't touch your skin. There you have it. There are some books that I've acquired recently. Tell me about books that you've acquired recently down in the comments below. Or if you're interested in any of these books, also tell me that down in the comments below. On the way down in the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment, but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you happen to be on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a Ko-fi account which is a digital tipping service. The link for that, as always, is down below. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye! Now I gotta clean up this situation. Fun.